Everybody, here we are out in the wild blue yonder of uh, Morton Bay Regional Council areas. Looking at all the castor oil plant, highly toxic. And all the other weeds growing up the embankments here in massive infestations. It's one of the biggest problems that when you're dealing with councils who have no moral content, no moral conduct, you have these sorts of issues. ridiculous part of it is that at all levels all of these things started off at manageable manageable levels and then they claim that they can't do anything with it because it's too big a problem but it got to be a problem that big so let's just go for a little walk and have a little chat eh so we've got some very interesting news from the um, from the uh, agricultural minister's uh, office from the premier. I um, upset him, as I said in my last written posts um, on Facebook. I upset them terribly because I said that the um, the premier was operating illegally by lowering the club by calling Lantana low risk. And it's interesting because the councils for the last two years have been telling me that. And finally, the Premier's got jacked up enough that um, she's not happy and she's hitting back out. So apparently they reckon that the Premier had never used the term low risk. There is no low risk written anywhere in the state government's documents. The state government's documents are the Biosecurity Act, and the Biosecurity Act is the law. But hold on a minute, the councils have been operating outside of that law for um, years and years and years then why did the state government allow them to do that? These materials didn't just spring up overnight in these environments, destroying this ecology with that water running down through that hillside and flushing these materials down into these water courses and the drainage ditches on the side of the roads here and continuing on downstream. But interestingly, the state government now admits that water is a massive contributing factor to the uh, spread of lantana. In fact, it's the number one spread of lantana. It's also the uh, absolute reason why lantana propagates, um, which was in the government documents anyway. It was their documents that state that the lantana, every time it gets 25 millimetres of water, it reseeds. Now, why didn't the councils know about this? Why don't the councils do anything about these materials growing in areas like this creating this sort of erosion when they're fantastic erosion tools which is an absolute lie they're too shallow rooted the first thing that disappears downstream when any decent uh, movement of water comes is lantana but the seeds certainly do d um, spread down seed look at that fall there and the way that ground is all shaped you can see the way the ground is damp here and the way the ground dumps the little seeds directly into the water course heading downstream into the water but you can see how far this stuff goes back up this hillside this is all council stuff you know there is no management on the council side of these things but at least the state government now is absolutely smashing the councils they were very very uh, nasty about the way that uh, the councils have been saying that uh, the state government came up with low risk when apparently it didn't it came up with a lower classification which when you look at it was done for the same reason as what low risk is done it's so they can claim that they can do nothing about it they can just leave it to look like this on the sides of roads dumping into the watercourse now that would then beg the question that now that you know how big a part that water plays in the propagation of lantana and you now know how big a part the uh, water plays in the spread of lantana would you not consider things like that to be of a major major risk a major major contributing factor to this now this one here is the one i've been talking about all along this is uh, japanese sunflower it's over in here you can see very very big issue she's going beautiful here but this stuff up on the um sunshine Sunshine Coast hinterland is absolutely insane how there's thousands of acres of this material and it is 
it is one to watch for the future. Now, another interesting thing that came from the state government's um, very unhappy letter with me, which they can... Oh, well, anyway, we better not go there, had we? Um, you know, these criminals have allowed these materials to go like that on surfaces like that. Now, keep in mind that those weeds were not all the way up there. That's 200 feet in the air up there. They weren't up there. They should have been stopped long before they got there. The um, little uh, what's the name things that the that Morton Bay Regional Council have been doing around the area that uh, will fail in Lantana are all below these infestations here. So, you know, is it a surprise that when I said to them, you know what, you, you're wasting your money, you're wasting your time, and you're wasting our efforts on these silly, silly games when our assets are buried that deep it's four foot tall pole deep in lantana in this sort of wet terrain propagating at six thousand new plants per plant and you're doing this downstream when you've also got uh, main roads as lantana only 20 meters from your lantana where you pulled it out of the ground so what hope do we have but see, when they play that one for the government, and when they brainwash you again, they'll be saying, oh, yes, but we did, uh, you know, five different projects. Yeah, each of them moved about uh, a dozen plants or whatever, but it just continues on and on with these people making out that um, this material can't be beaten. But now they admit that uh, water plays such a big part in it, then how the hell can you possibly have watercourses choked with this crap like this that castor oil plant would be 40 feet to 50 feet tall there and the vines growing over it and the rest of the vegetation growing over it and no hope of anything being done to fix these problems but I started to tell you which was a very interesting thing to tell you is that um, the state government when they wrote that and said oh yeah well you know the emergence and the problems that uh, Japanese sunflower cause while they're very um, upsetting and it's a major problem we literally have thousands of weeds out of control in Queensland that aren't even on the list now many of you have asked the question of why am I so concerned about all of this stuff and why do I put so much effort into it? When you look at a $175 billion problem, and we will get to next, uh, the beginning of next year, and it'll be 20 million hectares, and it'll be $250 billion problem, um, and absolutely nothing being done about it. So at the end of the day, when you look at it, you can start to see why when they say they've got thousands of other weeds out of control under their uh, out of control under their control all right that they're responsible for not under their control that they're responsible for and not a bloody clue this is nothing to what is going to happen in the years to come with these people operating in the manner that they are now you look at that for a view and all of the seeds travel down these watercourses from those types of infestations up there all illegally released into the system and you start to get an understanding of why I'm so concerned you look at these new U-Butte um, koala corridors that they're coming up with you know we, we don't need more trees we need to look after the trees that we've got we need to protect the environments we got but the problem is we're too willing to allow councils to do that that's a council issue that's a council done that the council says, oh no, water board's problem because we've got three departments of the water board who are responsible for water courses. So no, that'll be their problem. Sides of the roads, it's, uh, uh, main roads is problem, TMR's problem. You know, it doesn't matter how this comes about, but the weeds are the problem and the, and the Australian native flora and fauna are the ones paying the price for it because we're too slack to get up and say, you know what, you can't possibly allow stuff to grow like that. You can't allow things like that to happen. It's just impossible to fix it after it's broken on that basis. But now we're going to plant 
whole new koala corridors supposedly to run to link places together so we're going to plant trees that we don't protect the trees that we already have because the koalas can't live there because the premier was allowed to uh, grow lantana to the levels that they have been in new south wales and queensland you know nothing will change things will only get worse because that's our mentality we don't need more bush we need to look after the bush we have it's just write it off and throw it away because it'll be cheaper to just plant a new one hopefully we can and it won't work because if we didn't value the other area we definitely won't value the new area and nothing will get better but now that we know how much water plays um, the role in the propagation stakes of the materials and how quickly they propagate with uh, massive amounts of water then we really need to start saying well roadways are off limits waterways are off limits can't possibly have roadways being infested that run into drainage ditches that then cause that as they run into water courses those are your protected areas not not some special stupid buddy um, endangered species habitat that's miles from anywhere now hold on a minute the problem was those endangered species habitats are below these infestations you get what I'm getting at I'm angry that they let these things run into the endangered species habitats they spend a fortune on endangered species habitats and they never deal with the source of the materials and that's why the government has never had a clue and the councils have never been successful in lantana eradication it's purely because they don't have a clue about where they should be dealing with it but will they spend any money on learning will they learn anything and fix it no they just go and say we need to plant new forests because they messed up the ones that they were in charge of so tell me why would you think that these people would do a better job if we plant new forestry what will we do? Will we dig new watercourses and we'll write all these guys off because this is allowed to happen here? Is that what we're going to do? We'll just write off all of the watercourses because this has been allowed to happen? It just makes you wonder, you know, people used to chain themselves to trees to stop logging and stop um, endangered species from, you know, being in trouble. But you look at what they've done underneath your noses in suburbia. Now, this ain't far from anywhere. This isn't far from anywhere. And um, they did this right in front of everybody. And they claim, well, we have no knowledge. We don't understand why this is a problem. The councils constantly say to me, um, you know, we can't understand why there's such an explosion in the materials. Why are they propagating so quickly downstream now? When you have a look at that, you understand how come. When you see how much water comes down off that hillside and feeds this lantana all the time, that's why this stuff does so well. Such a nice moist environment for it all to propagate. Then it kills off all the grasses, suppresses everything else, and then they say, oh, we can't take it out of there because will then suffer from erosion problems. Well, Lantana was never any good for erosion control. It's a load of rubbish. But the key was we should never have allowed it to grow on steep embankments in the first place. That's what caused the um, other, other grasses and other materials to be removed from those areas. And then when you remove these materials, there's so much more rehabilitation work to go on and yet councils have said that for decades they know that the moment lantana comes up it should be dealt with that's your cheapest time to deal with lantana because nothing is under there all of the leaf litter all of the materials under there nothing is under there nothing nothing has moved any of those leaves in any direction for years and years and years where they fluttered and stopped and where they're liliopathicking everything else they are winning they are destroying the australian ecology 
and the koalas can't get from one side of the road to the other side of the road to any other food sources when they try to get from one place to another they get attacked by wild dogs Morton Bay Regional Council had um, 11 koalas killed last year in one one operation eight of them by one dog and uh, three of them by the other two dogs all because of lantana Australia Zoo says about how much lantana causes the deaths of these animals by that and also the stress of them trying to get from one food source to another food source or to water you know I don't know why I can't just be allowed to have a koala hey have a koala bear and take it out and stick it in the lantana and stick it in front of the lantana let it try and flap about and crawl about trying to get through the lantana what do you think that's that's not reasonable then tell me how come um, the wildlife groups are allowed to take a koala out into a place where there is no vegetation where they say it was clear-cut it was mulched it was all there's not a blade of grass and put the koala on the ground there and then film the koala somebody must be saying that's okay for them to do that World Wildlife Fund got a koala that was that drugged put it on the ground with its face in a puddle of water and if you look at the next lot of photos of it that koala looks as though it can't even keep its nose out of that water it's that drugged so somebody let them do that then why can't I have a koala to put around in this lantana and make my point yeah you're right because it'd be a disgusting misuse of things for a tribe of people to take a koala out in a cage, stick it in a big open field, then chase it down once the photos were taken, and nobody says a word about it. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. That's not a problem. We're losing 20 million hectares of land of land next year, at the beginning of the year, and a $250 billion problem. The state government says, yes, we never said it was low risk, so the government does say it's high risk the government does say it's the worst invasive weed in the in the world it's at the top 10 in 59 other countries only Australia lowered the classification now you figure that one out but in 158 years in Australia there is only the bell minor bird has actually taken up residence in Lantana there's nothing living under it there's nothing, nothing living in it and they say that it's um, here to stay, it's naturalised. So 20 million hectares, if there's 10 animals per hectare, that's, that's 200 million animals dead or displaced. There are no current significant works in Lantana for the purpose of eradicating Lantana in the nation. So what is the future with them allowing councils to say, well, as far as the councils are concerned now, it's low risk. When the councils tell the general public it's low risk and then the public get a price to clear lantana off their land and they can't afford it, what's the future? Because I certainly would like to know when no Australian animals live in lantana and you're now saying it can take over anything it wants, anywhere it wants, and there's no resistance, then I think we have a major problem. I really think that somebody needs to explain why the Premier lowered the, the classification of Lantana and then now wants to say, well, well no, hold on a minute. The, the um, Moreton Bay Regional Council has it list had it listed as low as low risk and that's not us we never had low risk on any of our documents now that's interesting isn't it she never had low risk on any of the state government documents it's been an actual um responsibility of the um biosecurity act for lantana to be not released into the environment not allowed to expand on a property and not allowed to leave that property now i can see where the state government is going next is they're going to say well 
because it floats in water how can you stop it from leaving how can you stop it from moving yeah you're right you need to stop it from being there in the first place that was the whole purpose of the biosecurity act 2014 you know you look at a 2009 we could have uh, met the growth rate of lantana at 25 billion dollars yeah you're right that's a big number but now in 2018 that figure to meet the growth rate of the material would be a hundred billion dollars do you see a problem this is what your premiers have done to the state of queensland and new south wales and your prime ministers turnbull and uh, morrison have done now it's got to be against the environmental law for this sort of catastrophe at this level to be released into the environment especially when it's a water course issue okay our water courses have some of the most um, stringent requirements on it and yet the three government departments that are responsible for lantana or lot sorry responsible for the water courses not one of them will do anything about the lantana growing in those water courses in the last 20 years so do we have a problem our councils do nothing our councils are responsible directly for enforcement so when they have main roads having lantana growing all the way along Debra Road from Petrie to Debra, Debra to Sanford, Debra to Mount Mee, not actually everywhere. It's the council's responsibility for them to enforce against the, um, against the um, Main Roads Department, TMR, and against National Parks and Wildlife, yes, and against all of those entities. But they never, ever have in our history. Okay? But now Morton Bay Regional Council are even going so far as to say we're not even going to enforce against residents anymore because we have so much of it growing on our lands and the state government has so much of it growing on their lands, we give up. It was never a council's um, right for them to make that sort of choice when it's a nationally significant issue. And the, we've got to get our prime ministers and our premiers off their duffs and go, you know what, you guys need to stand up because $250 billion next year is not a low risk issue and it's not an insignificant issue. And no Australian animals live under, in or around Lantana. I spend all my time filming it. Nothing moves those leaves under that Lantana. Nothing is living in it. So it is a total exclusion of all Australian animals altogether. Only the bell miner bird uses it in hardwood old growth forests. And in those old hardwood growth forests, the hardwood's being destroyed. So what is the future for our nation when this is our leaders doing this? And they are also saying that the, that the councils are operating illegally. The councils are making statements about it being low risk, and it's not. So how do we move this forward? What do we do with it? How do we hold these people accountable for this ecological catastrophe, this environmental disaster? How do we do that? It's a major issue that we have to deal with and something that we really, really, really um, need to dig to the truth because there's so many lies been told between the state government, federal government and the uh, councils. But at least now the state government is um, dumping all over the councils and setting that part of the record straight. And at least now because of my work, the state government is admitting how big a role water plays in this material, in its spread, in its growth rate. The problem is I can see what they're going to try to do next is say, well, how do you stop it from floating away on the water? Yeah, you stop it by, from doing that by stopping it from growing. Lantana is one of the easiest weeds of all to deal with when you deal with it early. When you've allowed this sort of stuff to happen as the governing body, then you have a problem. And then you have $250 billion issue that they're calling low risk. Somebody should be in jail for what is happening in our nation when you consider no animals are living in that. Bird, there's not squadrons of birds picking the seeds up and eating the berries and moving them to other places. That was all, always a fallacy, but for the last 50-odd years, 
the government has gotten away with telling you that that's the number one way that lantana is spread and it is not water has always been the reason for its propagation it has always been the vehicle of its movement and travel birds play a very tiny part in the movement and then they die they get liver poisoning the same as every other um, animal does that eats the berries humans die if they eat the berries of um, lantana that's documented in Australia and it's documented in South Africa this is what we face as a nation and it's time we became the keepers of the um, of the ecology because the government certainly can't be trusted with what they've done so far but you know until enough people know about it and enough people care about it it's what we face to try and fix these things up but how do you have national parks fully fully occupied by lantana like at um, Mount Glorious, Dundas all of that country there for 20 odd kilometers out the water um, the water course all illegal and all absolutely devastating to the entire ecology all the way through and the Department of Natural Resources, Mines and Energy says that, that can't happen however that's being allowed to occur that can't happen the DAF says that well that's the council's problem the council is supposed to put a breach notice in on the uh, National Parks and Wildlife Service okay Somerset Council why has there not been a breach notice put in on this on the um, National Parks and Wildlife and we need to have a proper answer to it how come how come main roads hasn't been um, served how come councils have not been serving these organizations because these organizations are actually flooding council lands how come there's some sort of cover-up with the Palaszczuk government and the, then the federal government with federal government biosecurity there's some sort of cover-up here because environmental law says it's a crime to willfully and knowingly allow something to happen now if the government is suddenly saying we never knew before Gary came along that water moved this material so uh, readily well their own documentation says that they knew that it was uh, propagated at those rates they knew that they knew it um, the 25 millimeters of water now if you get a six meter road so two cars wide six meter road one meter of road and you get a millimeter of water on that road you get um, six liters of water off that with one millimeter of rain on that road so how much water did you get off a big road how much water did you get off a surface like that that comes down from miles up there around this corner all falling down the road how much water do you reckon you get in that lantana down there how many times a year do you reckon that sucker propagates and and seeds and what comes over the embankment and down that steep section that I showed you down the bottom there how much water do you reckon there is through there how many times a year does that propagate it's an amazing thing when you work out why they've never been successful in dealing with lantana where they deal with it because the softies go and deal with it in the simplest of terrains and in the simplest of areas and the rest they just create absolute carnage with and never deal with the source of the problem because they don't know how they don't know how and they don't know what the source is they don't know how to read the lantana or the land so let's see how the um the agricultural minister and the premier go with that because it it takes them forever for them to respond to me when i bring things to their attention but we know that water propagates it at the rates that it propagates it and we know how far water spreads it because water spreads it across all of the terrain it's completely different to a bird dropping an occasional piece of lantana that's proper propagation across entire landscapes and that's what the um, national parks claim they have a landscape wide um, policy meaning that uh, the entire landscape is covered by lantana and then no more lantana can grow I well that must be what they mean because that's what they're doing at um, glorious and um, and Dundas and the uh, Diagula National Park well it's every national park it's it's um, Fraser Island like why isn't the federal government jumping all over that they're responsible for world heritage areas you know you've got four-wheel drive clubs having to pull the um, lantana out of the beach where the government said to you lantana can't grow in salty areas 
It's growing on surf beaches in um, in in um, Fraser Island. Why do these lies keep going on? It's growing in water courses that it is sitting in water. Now it can't grow in a waterlogged area. Well, <laughs> I can show you plenty of areas. It's completely waterlogged. It's doing real well. So why are we allowing the Palaszczuk government to lie to us? Why are we allowing the ministers to lie to us? Why are we allowing the environment ministers who are responsible for the water courses to be doing nothing in the water courses when they now, well, when they have always known that water spreads it, water propagates it? How can you allow something to grow with access to the water course? Those are the questions that we really should be asking because no Australian animals are living in it, under it or around it. So wherever we allow it to grow and take over like it has in this environment here I showed you, there's no Australian animals in that anymore. 20 million hectares of it. And it's not going to be 10 animals per hectare. I'd love to know what the actual figure of what should be in a hectare of Australian bushland because that would be very interesting to get to know. Anyway, thanks for very much for coming along. I'm Gary from Lantana Removal Queensland, and I am the business. I've been doing lantana eradication for 40 years, and as one, one little gentleman said the other day with a big mouth, he said, I'm uh, just a contractor. Well, I'm the only contractor that gets a permanent eradication of lantana. You know, so I guess that makes me a bit different to somebody who read a book and thinks he's a legend with a big mouth. But anyway, that's for him to deal with. Okay, thanks for popping in. I'll see you on the next one. And thanks a lot for your support. Please share the videos everywhere. Please share the um, information everywhere because it is only me who's standing up to these people and the deaths of the koalas and other animals. Otherwise, nobody else has been talking about Lantana. You know, all of the Green parties ha went to the polls, went through all the elections, and you'd ask them about Lantana. So, Lantana, what? What? What's that? These people have never been in the bush in their life, and they're called the Green Party. None of the others, not one other politician stood up for it except for Lloyd Russell. The only person who went around with me and uh, went everywhere to the council meetings. So, only people that are standing up for the ecology. But when it's travelled by water and propagated by water, we better get started after it because it can't be left as they claim it can because it's absolutely devastating to everything that happens after that. Catch us on the next one, 0449 986 880 and lantanaremovalqueensland.com.au.